What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another exhilarating episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. If you're new to this channel, we talk about all things prison and crime related, including today's clip, a biker having a run in with police. Crazy situation. And I also have a story for y'all where uh, just, was it, yes, day before yesterday, I got into a fender bender and I saved this guy from going to prison. I literally changed this man's future. And I'm going to explain exactly how. But if you enjoy this kind of content, do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. Now let's go ahead and hop down south to Texas. See what these bikers are up to. Turn around. Why? Turn around. Why? Turn around. Sir, you freaking tell me what's going on. I will more than happy. I'm going to search you. To comply. You're the odor of marijuana. No, I'm not. Yes, sir. How long am I the owner of marijuana? The odor of marijuana. Odor of marijuana. Yes, sir. Okay. We were talking, how did you get that? How did you how did you get that? Sir, turn around and where, where do you finger. smell it? Turn around. I do not consent to a search, officer. Okay. I think the majority of my viewers know that police officers love to use that phrase, I smell a little bit of Mary Jane in your car. I've had an officer tell me that and I was honestly not smoking a damn thing in that car. And the person who owned it didn't smoke no bud either. So it was just a complete sham for him to say that to me unless he was smelling some kind of wild plant that was around the car at the time which i doubt but i know over here in virginia you cannot pull someone over say hey i smell marijuana and get them out the car legislation to stop police from searching people or seizing property based solely on the smell of marijuana in virginia is set to take effect after lawmakers adopted recommended changes from the governor the new law which contains a variety of reforms related to motor vehicle and law enforcement policy stipulates that no law enforcement officer may lawfully stop, search, or seize any person, place, or thing solely on the basis of the odor of marijuana, and no evidence discovered or obtained as a result of such unlawful search or seizure shall be admissible in any trial, hearing, or other proceeding. So we got a good over here in Virginia. They can smell reefer all they want, but they can't get me out the car for it. I'm sure if they can see it, no, it might be a little bit different of a situation, but it's going to be legal here soon. I think uh, in July, if I remember correctly. A lot of new laws have been taken into effect in many states, especially over here in mine, Virginia. But now this is what I don't understand. The officers in this clip says they smell marijuana. Uh, I'm pretty sure the biker ain't riding in a car. So the marijuana smell isn't really trapped in his motorcycle. Seeing as there's no windows or doors, roof. So this cop's pretty much saying that he smelled weed in the air. In the air, in the area. Let's face it, he probably didn't smell nothing. And they're just giving this dude a hard time. Okay. Turn around and interlock your fingers. What? Turn around and interlock your fingers. Interlock your fingers. Behind your back. Why? Interlock your fingers. Think you can bend over. I'm not being a no. I don't trust you. <laughs> I told you I would cooperate with okay. you. But you're being an asshole. Turn around and interlock your fingers. Odor of marijuana. You're crazy. Okay. Pull up on you. Relax. Huh? Relax. Pardon me? Relax. Can I move? Yes. Pick up that sig, big dog. Pick up that seat! All right, sir. Information on you, the vehicle you're driving, you're over the side of a city ordinance violation, loud noise, signature is required at the bottom. It is not an emission of guilt, so saying you'll make contact with the court. He's getting a ticket for loud noise. Unreal. How do you expect these guys to listen to their music? They don't have no doors or walls. Of course, you're going to hear a little bit of tunes. Before the 8th of October. Okay. If you do not sign it, you will be arrested. Dang it. Okay. If you don't sign it, you will be arrested. This is a, a sound violation. He's getting a ticket for having his music too loud. And the officer says that you will be arrested if you don't sign this. I mean, how much time can you get in jail for a damn noise uh, complaint? I would have said, man, take me to jail. Hang on to that, you sign. I would like to read it. Thank you. I would like to read it. Read it. The guy's trying to take 
the pad from him so he can sign it. The officer will not let go of the the pad that he's trying to get him to sign that says, if you don't sign it, you're going to jail. But he won't give him the damn thing to read it, to hold in his hand. The pen drops. Cop ain't helping him pick up the pen. Shove that thing in my face. Okay. You want to read it? Read it. I would like to hold on to the sir, from I don't want to hold on to your I want to hold on to the piece of paper. No, sir. Just read it. Yo, this dude is is probably on the brink of really snapping. Because I can only imagine, you know, this biker. He definitely looks like someone that uh, doesn't have too many people tell him what to do, right? So this 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 officer, man, I mean, he is really pushing this guy's buttons. This is a grown-ass man. He's obviously older than the officer. Uh... And all he wants to do is take the clipboard to read what the hell he's signing. Officer will not allow him to take the clipboard. I know that shit sounds so petty, but to a man, this is like the battle of battle of battles mentally. I can't read that small. Why don't you read it to me? Sir. I, Sir, please read it to me. I explain. I'm not gonna sign it. I don't care what you said. Okay. I care what that piece I'm of paper I'm going to hold says. it and you're going to read it. If you don't sign it, you go to jail. You understand that? Look, <laughs> he would have done exactly what I done. You see what he did? He just shook his hand. Ah! Honor before the 8th of October. All right. Honor before the 8th of October. Yes, sir. Make contact with the board. Honor before the 8th of October. Okay. Oh, he took his glasses off to sign that shit. Did you find anything in my bike? No, sir, I did not. Did you find anything in my person? No, sir, I did not. Where's the probable cause? It was a smell when we walked out. What smell? The odor of marijuana. You did not mention anything like that when I fucking pulled up. Okay. You better get your shit together, Pop. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of, I guess you could say, profiling, if you were to ask me. And not only bikers. I mean, I've been through shit like this before as well. I just went through it the other day. Got a speeding ticket. I got to go to court. I have to go to court, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to speak about all this right now. I told you I have a story. Now, I was driving at the oceanfront two days ago. And uh, there was this emergency vehicle coming into the intersection. I was going through a, a, a four-way intersection at the oceanfront. So it was really, it's really crowded. And as I'm going through the intersection, emergency SUV response team comes flying in and stops. So I stopped because I don't want to hit them and they go past. But as I'm stopped, I had to stop slamming my brakes on as hard as I could. Right. So the person behind me rear ends me and they had a uh, car with like that bumper bar. You know what I mean? A little bumper bar on it. And thank God I was driving the Suburban because if I had my Infinity, that thing probably would have been <laughs> just decimated on the back end. But uh, but the bourbon took the hit like a champ. Left two little holes in my bumper. Two holes and a couple scratches. It wasn't nothing too major, you know, but it was enough for someone to call the police and file a police report. I haven't gotten into too many fender benders, so I don't really know <laughs> the process and all this shit. I just want to make sure that his insurance is going to cover the repairs of my vehicle, right? So when he gets out the car to check all the damage with me, he starts going into a rant. Please don't call the cops. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I mean, it was a rant. It was a rant, but as he was ranting it, I could obviously tell it's just because he's drunk as hell probably. I could smell it on him. He's been drinking, but he's giving me all this other bullshit why he didn't want me to call the cops. And uh, I didn't really want to call the cops any damn way. I don't even know how this process goes. Fender benders, I ain't been in one of these in God knows how long. And the last one was so bad of an accident, not on my my part, but uh, you know, someone hit me from the back with Griswold in the car. And it destroyed my car. We were perfectly fine, but it destroyed the back end of my car. And police came because the car get, couldn't get off the road. But even then, I didn't call the police. Someone else called the police. So I don't know how this shit works. Do you call the police during a simple fender bender with just a little couple scratches and dent? I understand filing a report for your insurance is usually the process. But with this case, I could tell easily this guy's been in the mix before, been locked up. And you know what I said to him? I said, look, just let me see your ID. Proof of insurance. I took pictures of all of it. Uh, I said, I ain't going to call no police, man. Just make sure your insurance takes care of my bumper. This guy was so damn grateful. It was almost as though he was reborn again. That's how I knew for a fact 
that if I called the police, he probably would have been him to hell up. Now, this is the crazier part. After we get done talking and all that stuff, getting his information, he leaves. I go about my business. I leave. So I pop the U-turn, and I'm going to get back on the main road, which is Pacific, and there's tons of traffic. So I'm in the Suburban, and it's massive, and it's hard to configure this damn vehicle out there in the ocean front, man. There's just so much shit going on out there, and you never know when you're going to have to pop a Yui, or you never know if there's going to be some gunshots. You never know. But anyways... I'm driving down Pacific and I'm trying to get around this damn traffic. I just got fender bendered and I can see this car above me slamming on his brakes. And I didn't want to have to slam all my brakes again. The guy behind me is pretty damn close. So I decided to cut right and speed up. You know, to get around the shit. So I cut right, speed up, going down this bridge. And the bridge at the bottom of it is a speed trap. I get clocked going reckless driving in a 35. I think I was going like 57 or something like that. A few miles an hour over to make it reckless. And this female police officer comes up to the door. I can tell she's a damn rookie, so that means she's going to give me a ticket. Rookies give anybody and everybody a ticket because they think they're making a change in life. Anyway, she comes back, gives me a ticket. I said, man, I don't get no warning. You can't give me a warning. She goes, no, uh, I, I see you've gotten a lot of speeding tickets, so I'm going to have to see you in the courtroom. And then I get a little cranky, I ain't gonna lie, so I keep getting all these damn tickets because none of y'all want to give me a warning. I might have toned it down a little bit, a little bit than that, but I could have snapped a little more. That's why I said, none of y'all damn police want to give me a warning, of course I'm going to have a lot of tickets. Officers, give more warnings for God's sake, man. I'm trying to break people's wallets, trying to break their life and spirit with them damn speeding tickets. So now I got to go to court. And I'm going to fight for my life in there, man. I don't give a shit if it's a reckless driving or not. I told her I just got into a fender bender and this is the bullshit part. She goes, you got an incident report? <laughs> of course I don't because I didn't call the damn cops. I probably would have gotten out the reckless ticket if I called the cops. But if I called the cops, then he would have went to prison. So now I'm going to court. See how that shit turns out, man? Sometimes it works like that. You do good and shit comes back to you. But later on, the good will come back. I know it will. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A little story and a crazy clip to review for y'all. Always remember, try to cooperate with police as best as possible. It's okay to get mad and cranky, but don't go overboard. Don't go overboard, especially nowadays. And on a side note, for those of y'all uh, that love Lucy Girl, my English bulldog, the mascot of this channel, I took her into the vet two days ago to get a uh, routine checkup, blood work, Nails done, ears cleaned, you know, all that good stuff where blood work came back and it looks like her kidneys are, her, her balances in her kidneys are a little off, a little off. So they did a lot of kidney tests on her and I'm waiting to hear results. Um, it could be anything from a urinary tract infection all the way down to uh, kidney failure beginning. So... Uh, we all have dogs, and we all know that they don't last forever, especially English Bulldogs. They have a, a short life expectancy, but I have faith, man, and uh, my dog's going to be okay. I just ask for you all to pray for old Lucy girl. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. Check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and one merchandise off of Teespring. And ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank y'all. The last three months have been the best three months, analytically wise, stat wise, of my YouTube career life. And that, my friends, is a sign that this channel ain't going nowhere anytime soon.